up, YouTube, man? Hey, it is your boy, ENC, man. Look, today we're taking a look at something a little different. Uh, a lot of y'all don't know, but I'm big into gaming for to an extent. Uh, there's certain games that I really like a lot. I'm trying to get my channel, you know, more expanded out so we can do other things for other viewers as well, not just the music game. You want some chips? All right. Um, and, uh, here you go. And one of the games that we're looking at today is called uh, uh, Civilization. And uh, Civilization, uh, it's Civilization 5. I know they got other civilizations out. Basically, this is a game where basically you are in control of a country and you control the military, financial, political, everything. Every aspect of controlling a country basically is what you're in charge of. So I love this game. I've been playing it since I was younger. Uh, give that to me. Thank you. I'm playing it since I was younger, and uh, it's the game just kept getting better and better and better. So we're going to do a walkthrough of this. All y'all that already know about this game, I'm sure y'all already know exactly what we're about to get into. Those that don't know about it, you're in for a fun-ass ride. It's a lot of fun. It's a hell of a lot harder than you think it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, and this is the one the home screen here. We're going to go ahead and set up a game. <clears throat> I like doing, obviously I like playing with America, obviously Archipelago. It's basically a war with a whole bunch of little islands. I like playing a huge map size. I keep the difficulty level right now, Warlord, which is pretty easy, so it shouldn't be that hard, especially if we're doing a, uh, we're playing it with y'all watching. This is a good way for y'all just get an idea of the game. Uh, we're going to do an entire game, too. The game takes a long-ass time. It's not like a, a game where you just, it's over in like 20 minutes. So, we're going to go ahead and set this game up here. Uh, it looks like there are other tw there are 12 other players, 24 city-states, and we're going to go along, and I'm going to kind of discuss exactly what we're doing as we're doing it. I promise you if you're still tuning into this channel right now you will going to absolutely love this I promise you promise you promise you I like things about military and taking over the world and doing things politically and stuff like that so I mean you can make treaties you can make uh, uh, you can do trade agreements you can do allies you can build UN you can build you can build damn near everything there's different you can build different military equipments military bases things like that so everyone plays it very differently I'm going to show you how I play it, and I hope you all fall along. hope you all enjoy it. I love this game. I'm not going to lie to you. I love it, love it, love it, love it. But before we can do that, I got to pop open an energy, energy drink because it is, what time is it right now? It is 8.17 in the morning. My son's eating Pringles right now. He's already eating breakfast, so he wants Pringles. So I give me some Pringles. Give me two seconds while this loads up. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So the, one, the first thing you're going to notice is it takes a hot minute for anything to really load up the first time you do it. I promise you, as we get going on this game, as we come back and do more videos, this will be faster. So, and I am drinking another ghost. It is the sour watermelon one, the Warheads one, which is going to, I guarantee you, screw me because this is going to be hot. Or uh, not hot, but you know what I mean. All right. So. We're going to go and get this started right now. Um, the first thing you see, it's basically going to talk to you about your manifest destiny. Every country has different perks to it. Uh, America, all land, all land military units have one plus sight, meaning you can just see a little farther. And a 50% discount on person tiles. That is important. Here's why. Because you have to be able to allocate your money. If you start going into debt, and you're going to, it happens sometimes. If you start going into debt... You can't buy shit. If you can't buy shit, you start losing military people. We start using military people, you will lose the game. So it is very difficult to keep your money. You be gaining more money than losing. So let's take a look. Begin your journey. And we're going to kind of walk through this screen right here. So this is your basic screen that we're looking at here. Um, we haven't really built anything yet, obviously. This guy right here with the flag is your settler. So he's able to build some cities. So what we're going to do is going to click this button here. We're going to found a city. Oh, shit. Not going to bullshit. This side of one man is probably my favorite one by far. It is hella good. Man, that shit is bomb. I'm about to be drinking that a lot more. So we just built the city of Washington right now. Um, the next move it wants me to be able to do, my son's playing with, the, with Nala. Uh, is uh, we have a warrior right here. So the warrior is a military unit. I'm actually going to use him and kind of explore and see what's around here. Um, we're going to choose the production because we want Washington to build something right now. So when you see this little diamond right here, this little shape right here, that means it's bringing in some money. So we're going to click that because we want to build a monument. But we can also build different units here. Things that are not 
uh, and bright white means we can't build it yet. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and build a monument here. And we're going to see now we get to research something. And as we get going, I'm not going to explain as much. But for now, we're gonna, I'm going to do it so you all understand it. Besides each uh, technology advancement, it tells you what it's for. Like this is for money. This is for defense. Basically meaning it can, it can be utilized in the military aspect. So I like using a lot of... I'm huge on military. I love military. So I like... The way I fight a lot of my wars, I'm heavy, heavy, heavy naval, and I'm heavy, heavy, heavy artillery. Um, ranged weapons is what I like. Um, I'm not big on air power. Air power is very difficult to maintain. I don't like it. I think I can, I can get the exact same benefit in a war with ranged naval and artillery as I can with the, air, with the aircraft without one being shot down. But that's way, way, way in the future, so we're not worried about that right now. I am going to go ahead and build an archer. That's my range unit. You'll kind of see how I run things. We're going to click next turn right here. <clears throat> and we just kind of have to sit here and wait until it's your turn again. But I promise you this game gets addicting. Now, look at this top screen right here. This right here in the top left, that blue, is your science. So every turn, I'm getting plus four science points. Which means that's it, it all goes to how fast you can get new technology. Like this right here. This is your technology. Is your technology, your technology wheel. I'm sorry. I keep... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I want this blue all the way around. When that comes all the way around, it means I've developed archery. You can also look right here. I developed archery in 11 turns. The second right here is, you guess it's your money. I'm getting plus 5 gold every single turn. You want to keep this as high as you can in the plus. In the plus, you want to keep that yellow. If that goes red, you're losing money. This face right here is totally ha total happiness in my empire. I have 10 people right now happy in my empire. Again, same like money. You want to keep that in the green right there. This is your golden age right here. You want to get to 500. It starts the golden age. <clears throat> and this up here is more of your culture. You want to get one plus culture every turn. When I get to the 20, I can get new social policy, which we will go over again. There's a lot to this game, and it's that it, it makes it just that much more addicting. There is no one way of winning this game. You can win it in a thousand different ways. I promise you. It's so much fun. So, <clears throat> we're going to keep exploring with this guy. The number you see right there is uh, how far he can go, how long it would take him to get to that spot in general. So, if I were to go, like, over here, it's going to say three because it's going to take three turns or three days to get there. I like it turns as days. So, it's that you'll understand that once we go to war with the country, why that's important, why I look at it that way, because that determines how fast I can get equipment to where I need to go to launch my offensive or defensive attack. Uh, I also don't start wars for the hell of it. Some people do. I've played it online where people are just assholes and they just like to start wars for the hell of it. It's kind of fucked up. But, uh, yeah. So, we're going to go next turn because I only have one unit. <clears throat> It looks like I got put on a shitty <coughs> <clears throat> shit. Sorry, I got put on a shitty map. It looks like I'm on a very small island right now. Um, but that's why we're exploring because I will be building another settler because I'm going to want to. I'm gonna want to uh, uh, expand pretty quick. Come on, there we go. All right, we're back with this unit again. So as you know, it's going to keep going to that unit until Washington, my capital, builds what it needs to build. The star means capital. This right here is a picture of what we're building right there. That right there tells you how long it's going to take to get done. This bar right here, once this fills up, I'm going to gain another population. So as of right now, this is 1,000 people in this city. 1,000 people are in this city right here. Um, once this goes all the way up to the top, that should drop to a 2. You need food in order to grow, things like that. It's hella realistic. Um, so, yeah. Only annoying thing with this game is once things start going, the more pieces you have in this game, the more pieces the other players have in this game, the longer it takes to be able to take your turn. So that's the only downside to all of that. So it looks like... 
And there are barbarian camps in here. There's terrorism in here. There's a lot, man. I promise you. There's so many different ways. It's like a real world situation. So I love this game. They do have Civilization 6 out right now. Nothing past 6. I like playing Civ 5. I'm just used to it. I've debated about getting Civ 6. I think I've had it before. It's just something about it. So this right here, this means I've discovered some ruins. Ruins, which is right here, which you can see. The ruins are ways of getting money. You can get military technology. You can get new units. You can meet people. Um, there's, they come a gift, so you want to try and get those. And once they're gone, they are gone. Like you cannot we get them again. So if an enemy gets it, or a barbarian encampment gets it, or a, a barbarian itself gets it, it's gone. You can't touch it, and you lose whatever's in there. So I like to try and make sure I utilize those and get those when I see them. Um, again, there's so much that we will continue talking about this as we progress and as we go along. Um, and we're only going to do parts of the game today. We'll continue going with this same game as we, you know, as you make more videos and whatnot. But all my Civilization fans, I promise you, y'all going to love this. All right. So right here. Let me, so it says, I explore the ruins. Uh, I've discovered a crudely drawn map which outlines the surrounding area. So again, you get different things. So this one was a map. I found a map that showed me kind of the area. So now I have a better idea of what's around me. Over here on the right, it says a uh, barbarian encampment has been discovered. It will create barbarian units until dispersed. Now, that is dangerous because... Yes, bud. What? You want to, you're watching dinosaurs. Triceratops. My son loves his dinosaur stuff. Um, so basically right here, barbarians are your early day terrorists. Basically, it's the same thing. That's just what I call them. Uh, they can attack your cities. They can attack your people. They can kill you. They can cause damage. They can do all of that stuff. Um, they're annoying. Uh, you never want to bring an unarmed... Uh, a non-military unit around them because they will kill them. They will also attack my uh, my warriors. So, which is another reason why I am trying to make. I need this monument done so I can make an archer. Which I don't know why. Oh well, archer being built. Grayson, no more. No. Um. So yeah. <clears throat> Go next turn here. So we're just going to kind of wait for this turn. Thank you, bud. I swear, my son loves getting the... He loves being a part and just getting my attention when it's not on him when I'm reacting and stuff like that. It's kind of funny. All right, so we're going to move this over. It'll tell you right here, you need orders. <clears throat> and, I mean, I can click on this map here, and it will move me around. Now, it's, it's lagged. A little bit which I don't like doing that um, but you can look up here my money is starting to gain a little bit which is good uh, I'm going next turn there I really need those archers done so I like doing a three artillery piece with one attacking unit so my art my archers I consider my utility for right now uh, so I like to have three archers or probably right now <clears throat> Actually, I'm probably going to switch into a two archer group and one attack unit. Uh, it just keeps, you know, it just ensures I have some sort of range. And I'll show you how to utilize those properly. But as of right now, I want to knock out this barbarian encampment. I don't know. It looks like Washington has grown. So Washington is now sitting at 2,000 people. And you notice my uh, monument has been built. So I'm going to have to build something new here in a minute. So there's your barbarian cam right there. They, so this right here, it has a warrior in it. It says the barbarian brute, but I just compare it to what's on here. It's the exact same uh, icon. So that's how I know what I know. That's how I know what they're building. So we're going to go back to Washington. We're going to choose some production. I want to build a settler now. I need more cities. So the settlers will build you your city. So it's going to take 14 turns, 14 days to build it to train a settler. Which is fine. We got some time because we're waiting on this archer to get done too. But this archer will be done well before Washington builds a settler. Yeah, this map kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to actually attack this barbarian camp so y'all can kind of see. If I hover over top, well, I can't do it now. But if you hover over top, it'll kind of tell you how many people are in that unit, their strength, things like that. And your chance of actually winning that attack, that battle. 
that is not necessarily gold. It can definitely change. Um, just because it says you're not going to win does not mean you're not. It's all about strategy. I love strategy games. So, like, this right here, <clears throat> it's saying that uh, uh, this thing will inflict approximately 6 damage points on it, and their strength is 10.5. Um, now, the terrain that you're sitting on also impacts your strength, your offensive capability, your defensive capability. And this right here gives a plus 25 terrain modifier and a plus 50% fortification bonus. The terrain modifier means it is not on flat land. It is probably next to, well, it can be, but it's probably next to hills, mountains, things like that, which it is. Um, your fortification bonus means the unit is fortified. If you're attacking a fortified unit... You better be strong as hell in what you're doing because it is not easy. But we're going to attack anyway so y'all can see. Uh, I get a 40% bonus for attacking the Barbarian. And my strength is 8.4 compared to their strength is 10.5. I'm only going to inflict 5 damage points on them. Now what you have to remember is every time I attack, there's a strong chance that you I'm going to get attacked myself. I mean, I'm going to take some damage myself. So if I attack them... <laughs> So based off of this, I should be losing this. But based off of based off the point that what I saw when I hovered over, I should be losing it. Um, uh, we actually are dead even. So this is your health bar. I lost half of my more than half of my health. I'm in the yellow. I want to stay in the green ideally. If I skip a turn in my territory, I can gain some health back. Uh, if I keep fighting, I was gonna lose it. There's a probably good chance that I will probably beat this barbarian, but he's going. I'm gonna be like dead. Which is kind of shitty, but it's okay because barbarians, I mean, warriors are not that great. I don't really give a shit about them. And it was free, so they can die. I start caring more about the players' lives if I'm the one building them. <laughs> if I have the money on them, which makes sense, you know? Let's see. Someone hit me up on Twitter. Appreciate you, Eric. So, right here, I build an arch right here. It's the first range in the game. That's what I like. It allows me to hit from a distance. So, we're going to attack. See, this. so this is my health unit right there. I can fortify it until it's healed, but I really don't want to do that. I want to kind of knock him out. Um, so I'm probably going to lose him. And this is your military general. He's telling me right now, he's not highly recommending me to attack this person. Because he's saying, I will cause some, I'm going to cause marginal damage to them. But they're going to do a lot more damage to me. Again, This they're going based upon the points as far as how strong they are. If we went based off of that, we should not be tired right now. So I'm going to attack anyways. I'm probably going to lose this. I lost. This is exactly what I thought. So just like I thought, I was probably going to lose that one, which is fine. Um, because I now have an archer coming in. The archer is going to take care of that for me. So I got to go build an archer. We're allowed to choose some more research. You can only do one. Re you can only research one new technology every turn. Or every at a time I'm sorry so what we're looking at right now is I want something for money so let's bring in some pottery we're gonna research pottery go over to the next turn we're gonna go back to Washington because I really can't do much right now I'm kind of stuck in this limbo where I kill my barbarian I kill my warrior and I don't have anything else really going on I got Washington building a settler I got my my uh, uh, country researching pottery so I kind of in a standstill right now but this popped up, so I can now adopt a policy. A policies are important because the policies can impact money, speed of, uh, of training, technology growth. It, it, it's, it does a lot. So the one that we're going to look at, we're going to start with tradition. So if you hover over tradition, you're going to see multiple different things in here that you can uh, that you can do. So each one comes with different perks, like uh, aristocracy gives you 15% production when building wonders, like... Great Lighthouse, Great Wall of China, and one plus happiness for every 10 citizens in the city. And that's important because if you don't have, if majority of your population is pissed off and upset, you're going to run into the issue of, of, uh, of riots. You're going to, you're going to, you can get into a position where you just can't build anything and you're going to get screwed. So you really want to make sure your happiness is doing pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and adopt it. This is, it says right here, it's traditionally best for small empires. We are a very small empire right now. Um, adopting tradition greatly increases the rate of border expansion. So this is going to allow my borders to expand quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead. That's my pager, actually. My department got a call. 
Um, oh, someone just fainted. So, all right. So I'm going to adopt this policy here. You should adopt it. Yes. I'm not too worried about these right now, just because it's so early in the game. I really don't care. Once I start getting to things like commerce and order and things down here, autocracy. That's when I start. That's when I start dominating some shit because I'm starting to utilize the perks of what they're for because I have more units at that time. The Utopia Project. You can win. Uh, this is one way of winning the game. You can get a cultural victory. And that means you have to, it says upon completing five policy branches, each one of these is a branch, you may construct the Utopia Project in one of your cities triggering the culture of victory. So if you can construct that Utopia Project, you will win. That's one way to win the game. You can win the game militarily. You can, there's a many, there's, like I said, many different ways to win the game. So I'm going to click next turn again. This is kind of the boring part of it because we're not doing too much right now. Um... It'll get a lot more fun once you start when I just start meeting new people, new countries, and things like that. And then they start pissing me off, and they denounce you, and things they talk shit, and then I go and the ass. You'll see. It gets trust me. All y'all military buffs out there who like or people that just like strategy games, y'all gonna love this game. I promise you. So next turn here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to build, that is fucking good, dude. I promise you, you need to go find one of these. Is the uh, the Ghost Warhead uh, Sour Watermelon. Y'all need to go catch one of these. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably blurry, but it's good as hell. If I find out, it's really hard. If I find out, I can't really see it when I edit the video. I will go ahead and post like a short on it. Grayson, leave the dog alone. He loves poking at the dogs. But he has to learn. There's boundaries with it. You can't just go put your hand on his faces. So this right here, as you can see, if I hover over it, this is an, uh, an element. So this is marble. See, if you look right here on the screen on the right, it says, or on the left, it requires masonry to use. So my workers can actually mine that stuff, and it brings in natural resources that make people happy. So, but I need the technology masonry to do that. Um, if you look on it, it says the output is to food and to gold. Again, food is important. That's how it allows your city to grow. If you don't have food, Coming to the city, you're not going to grow. Uh, Money-wise, it's going to bring in two gold every turn, which is, well, I don't know if it's every turn, but it's going to bring in two gold, basically, and that's, again, income. That's what you want. Um, if you look at my gold up at the top here, I'm now at six gold a turn, and I have 77 gold right now. So we're going to click next turn. If you have questions about anything, please drop in the comments. Um... I would love to be able to answer them for you. I promise you this is a fun-ass game. This game can also be done online with other people. So if there's ever someone that wants to play with me online, like on, like any of my YouTube subscribers or people that just like the game and want to play, let me know. And we can get something set up and I can whoop your asses on there. <laughs> um, What is this? Why is that blinking? Oh, it's just says the Barbarian camera. All right. So I'm going to go next turn again. <sighs> this is where it kinda, it's kind of lagging. Here. All right, so I can now adopt a policy. Same screen as before. Now, these now open up. I just adopted tradition, the ideology, the ideological aspect of the tradition. Now I can get different things inside tradition. One is aristocracy. I can get this one. It is going to give me one plus happiness for every 10 citizens in a city. I don't have 10 citizens in a city. I have two. So I'm not really touching that right now. This one provides a free culture building in your first four cities. That's not a bad one, but I want something that I can utilize right now. Workers, things like that. Uh, this one's a garrison unit. Costs no maintenance, and cities with garrison units gain 100% ranged combat. That is huge. I cannot explain it to you. It's huge, but I don't have any garrison units right now. We'll go over garrison units later on in the game. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do... So you want to be smart. I don't want to use this right now because I have plenty of happiness in my city. So I'm not going to utilize that. We're going to do the legalism, provide free one free culture building the first four cities, which is huge. We're going to adopt that policy. Um, you notice, I believe that went up. I don't know. I didn't really pay attention. So after I build a settler, the next thing I'm actually looking at building is going to be a range. It's going to be a range unit. So I want to start building a military. 
I personally don't build units in every city like that. I know some people do. I don't. I create certain cities which I designate as military bases, so they will be building the military units for me. Once a, uh, a city has built everything I want it to build in it, then I can start you know, pumping up military units out of that just so it doesn't sit idle. Other thing is just because you have certain things in the city that you can build doesn't mean you're going to want to do it. Remember, everything you build is going to cost you money. And the more money you're outputting, you better be in bringing in more than what you're spending. So, that's just, you don't want, again, you don't want to go into debt. Um, so, we're going to do that. Let's take a look. I'm going to skip this turn here. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, please keep following this, uh, these videos I bring up. It is not going to be as boring as you think it is, I swear. It's just, it's it's boring as you, as you you know, once you start. When you start, it, it's hella boring at first, but I promise you, it will speed up. I've been playing this game since I was in fucking high school. Like, literally, it, it's, they had Civ 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like, they had, so, they have multiple Civs, so, this is how much I love this game, this is how crazy addicting this game is, I've been playing it since high school, I'm 34, and I'm still playing this game, it is that addicting, and I don't play video games like that, I play Madden, I'll play Madden, FIFA, and I'll play, uh, uh MLB The Show in this, it's the only PC game I really play, um, but I actually love this game, so, it looks like we just built Pottery, um, and right here it tells you allows your cities to build a granary which provides food to help your cities grow larger Granaries are important. You have to have granaries if you want to grow So we're gonna go and choose new research now And I'm gonna look at sailing because I'm heavy 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 Navy. I love the Navy I think the Navy is huge Navy and cruise missiles are what I Really, really loved. That's I built a military man around. My philosophy is if I can overwhelm you with cruise missiles and naval bombardment, I don't have to send army units in there to actually to die. I can just I can de completely destroy a city with cruise missiles and bombardments, and then allow my military to go in and, like my uh, uh, ground units, infantry, and all that to just go in and wipe up, mop up anything left, and I take over a city or knock out units. I always, I do it very similar how the U.S. does when they go to war. I like to soften targets before I go in. I don't just send people in, which I know a lot of people in this game will do. They'll just send in 30 and 40 units. They're going to lose half of them, but they're going to win that way. But my thing is you're, you're spending a lot of time training and building these units for them to die. And I don't play like that. So sailing is what we're going to do right now. <clears throat> and then our settlers should be getting built pretty soon. Thing you have to realize with sailing is you cannot again. It's very realistic. You cannot just start sailing around the world because you you research the technology for sailing. You're getting a trimene. A trimene has to stay within the shallow area. So you notice how this right here is very light blue, but out here is very dark. It has to stay in this light blue. If it goes in the dark, it's gonna you're gonna lose it. I don't have navigation yet. Navigation is what I need if I want to start going all over the world. So. Yeah, trust me, you learned that the hard way. That's why I think this video is going to help all you new civilization players. It's going to help because you're not going to you're not going to die as quickly. So, oh, this white line right here, this is my city border. This is ba this is the border, a city border. So, this is the range of my country. So, I have a settler. The first thing I want to build, honestly, is probably going to be a naval facility. I want a naval facility. I like my navy. So, I'm going to drop it right there. It takes two days for him to get there, and that's going to be a naval a naval base. I like nicknaming my naval bases. Uh, my first one's always Pearl Harbor. I think it's a well, it's a well-known military base. Everyone knows about Pearl Harbor. Um, that is always the first city I name. My, that's always the first naval facility I name. So, now I can choose production. I want to go ahead and build an archer. I don't have an army. I don't have an army base yet. Uh, that will be the next thing I'm going to build. It will be an, ar an army facility, an army base. It's the next city. Until then, I'm going to be using Washington to build my military units because I want to go destroy that barbarian encampment that <clears throat> killed my warrior. That did absolutely dick. It didn't do shit. Um, 
it's just, I'm, yeah, I'm not surprised. But um, these things here, uh, whenever you see birds fly in the air, like a school of fish, that means you can actually build fishing on that towel, which brings them more food. But again, you have to have the technology for it. Like right here, create a fishing boat. The fishing boat, that's what it's going to do. It's going to give you the opportunity to bring fish in from the sea, but you can only do it on towels like that. And they don't tell you exactly. It requires sailing. So once I have sailing, then I typically use Washington or I call it a civilian city to actually to build those fishing boats. What's up, dude? Chip. Chip. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go next turn right here. <clears throat> and we're coming down. Is that for me? Oh, okay. He's waving his Pringles around and won't actually give me a Pringle. It's a typical two-year-old. <laughs> All right, so now we're in this spot right here. So now this is what I like to really think about it. Do I want to build a city right there, or do I want to build a? Uh, do I want to build a naval naval uh, spot right here, or do I want to build it here? If I build it here, I have this little uh, <clears throat> inlet here where I can store some ships, because you can't store multiple ships in the city at once. I like to store them outside, so it's easy deployment. Um, I like to based off of this right here. I like to have an eastern, ideally a north, south, east, west naval uh, naval fleet. So I can de I can deploy units out quick. I don't like having to make them take weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So if I do it here, this is going to cover and defend most of the west coast of this country. Um, I'll probably build another one, most likely. Dinosaur? It's not a dinosaur chip, but I'll probably build the next one probably around here to protect. Then my house is couple of we'll, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's just focus on this one right here. So we're going to build it there. No, okay. Again, he won't share his chips with me. I see it. It's a chip. It's a chip, Pringle. Next turn. I promise you these. I prom I just swear to you, it's gonna be all right. Ignore what I'm saying. This right here, I love these things. So there are multiple different types of these. These tell you where you rank in the world. So the Whoa. world's most progressive people. Wow. I'm dead fucking last right now. I'm absolutely shit. But the problem is, I have a score of a two. Everyone on this damn thing is either a two or a three. So realistically, I'm not. I'm like not really last. It's just I'm tired with everybody. So it really doesn't matter, I guess, right now. So we're gonna build a city here. I am gonna nickname. I'm going to rename the city Pearl Harbor. There. Adopt. Nala, no. <clears throat> so, I have another thing of legalism. I can do either landed elites, which gives me 10% growth and 2 plus food in the capital. Or I can do one plus gold and minus one and happens for every two citizens in the capital. I don't care too much about that. Um, but let's just do this one. I don't care right now. I gained one plus, uh, I gained a little bit of money per turn. I'm um, choose production, so I don't build settlers out of out of military bases. I just don't. Uh, so we're gonna start by building a granary here. Skip it over to the next turn, and we'll see. I hope that y'all catching on to this a little bit. If you have questions, again, just ask. Drop in the comments. That have no issue doing it. I'm trying to find other things to expand the channel with, and this is something that I love doing. It's hard because there's so many things I like. But it's hard to talk about it. A lot of people do things like they want to follow like the war of Ukraine. It's great, but you really have to know what you're talking about. You're going to get roasted in the comments. There's a difference between liking something and knowing enough to talk about it. And I don't know enough to talk about it. I just really like it. I watch other YouTube channels that discuss it and go over it. And I love those. But let's keep going. Is that a dinosaur? Hmm. We'll go next turn here. Because I'm waiting on this archer to be built. After this arch is built, we are going to build a city improvement in there, and then we're going to build another settler because I need an army base. I have to have an army base. Next turn again.
Dinosaur. So, okay. I've discovered more ruins. So now I gotta find where these ruins are. Because apparently... Oh. They're right here. Now, this is where it gets kind of strategic. Do I want to go in and try to get those ruins first? Or do I want to knock out that barbarian encampment? I'm going to go after the ruins first if I can flank and get around. And there's actually two. There's one here and here. So I do have this mountain range right here that's kind of protecting me. Um... Let's build a granary in Washington because I want that to grow. Again, the the more people you have in the city, the faster you will be able to build some stuff. Still got to watch my dog around Grayson because they love each other, but they are overly they're weird with each other. Good weird, not bad weird. Good weird. Like Grayson loves my son. He loves to pet the dog and play with the dog. and He just got to understand. You can't always, you know, sometimes dogs need their space. So I got to make sure, you know. He abides by that. All right, so I'm gonna go next turn here. I've already deployed out an archer to go up there. Um, and then I will end up, again, just like the naval facilities. I like, depending on how big a country my country is, I like to have different, I call them um, uh, battalions. Um, uh, I like to have different, like, you know, battalion, um, battle groups going in together. So. My idea is one battle group should be able to deploy and be able to hand, handle their own. Um, typically, for this early stage, it'll be like two archers. Actually, probably just like two or three archers. That's about it. Um, normally, it's going to end up getting to the point where once we get further along, I'll have um, rocket artillery. I'll have regular artillery. I'll have tanks. I'll have mechanized infantry. And I'll have regular infantry units. And then they'll be attached to uh, um, uh, uh, a naval gray. No. They'll be attached with the naval unit as well. So they all go on together. So that's how I like doing it. It allows me to fight multiple wars on multiple fronts rather than having to deploy everyone at one time to one area. Leaving something vulnerable. And that's what you're going to notice in this game. People will ally up. So if I'm attacking, let's say, China on my west coast, and I send everyone to focus all my military attention over there, but I'm also at war with, I don't know, India, and India's on my east, I have no one protecting the mainland. So that's why I like having multiple different uh, battle groups stationed where I don't have to deploy everyone over to one area. Obviously, that requires a lot more money um, to do, but I promise you, it, it, it benefits. It, it's worth it. And Washington grew, so I'm now at 3,000 people instead of two. Also gained a little more money, but my happiness went down. I was at 10, and now it's 7. So, that's something else that you got to keep in mind. You, again, you want to watch these things. You don't want to just let them go, because you will definitely screw yourself with that. And I understand this barbarian encampment's right here, right there. Um, but I'm, I'm after these two here. Um, and we'll see what we get from them. I'm not the type, I'm the type of person where I won't, I will literally follow the Geneva Convention. I know it's my philosophy, I know it's a game, you don't have to do that. But I really will not attack somebody unless I'm attacked, or unless there's a very good reason to do it. Like, they're encroaching on my border, and they're just assholes, and I want them gone. Again, every, t every war you get into, you are going to create some sort of reputation. So if you become a guy who's always attacking countries for no reason... Countries aren't going to trust you. And then you're more inclined to get multiple countries trying to attack you. So you really want to keep that in mind. You want to make sure you know what you're doing. You want to send people's good side. You want people to come to your aid and help you in wars. You don't want people saying, we don't trust you. And that does happen over some bullshit reasons. But it happens. But again, if you're strong enough militarily, people aren't really going to fuck with you too much. Nala. 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 Leave it. Grayson, stop. Dogs. Alright, so I have actually researched sailing. I now have the technology for sailing now. That's going to open up a lot for me. So we're going to continue here. We're going to choose new research over here. And now I'm going to look at, again, I'm very big on Navy. So our military. So I'm probably going to go with optics now. 
So optics are going to take 16 turns, but again, I want to make sure I have that. I want to make sure I have the naval power. Navy, I can go slow with everything else if I'm able to sh uh, knock out any enemy ships coming in before they can land any units. I don't need an army right now. Not right now, because I can knock them out at sea, which is my goal. So my archer is now going to run up on it. So, your unit equipped itself with advanced weapons. So, I found some weapons. So, what weapons did I find? So, I found a crossbowman. So, again, different things come from these things. That's why they're so important. So, now looking at a crossbowman is significantly stronger than a barbarian. Now, I can hit this barbarian from where I'm at right now. But the problem is, I don't have another move. I'm, I've already blown my, my, uh, um, my movement, my turn with this unit. But it's still going to take this this Barbarian two turns to get to me. So, with that being said, I have a little bit of time. Um, if he decides to move, he might move try and get out of my range. And sometimes that might be easier to get out of the range. Um, if you're going to lose, sometimes you know you haven't... If, you're, if I'm a warrior, and I know my enemy's coming up with a crossbowman, well, he's a dumbass. So, I'm going to click this button here. It's a range attack. This is how far... I can hit everything within this range right here. Everything in this range is well within my capabilities. So what I actually want to do, because he's a range unit, I want to move him. I want to move him down to about right here. Because I'm aware he's going to try and follow me. So I can move faster than him. So if I can get here, he's probably going to get here and then I'm going to nail him. And I can hit him twice before he even before he can touch me. That is why I like the range unit so much. If you know how to utilize them, you know how to use them. It's gonna make your life a world. It's gonna it's gonna be a world easier. I promise you. It made no sense. It's gonna be a whole lot easier. They're also smart. So he moved out of my range because he I was feeling he knew what I was doing. So I need to cancel this guy's movement and I need to move him up. I can't see him now because he's in the area where I can't see. My visibility range is not that far. So what that means, he's there now. I'm going to have to just attack him like that. If I was attacking a city, it'd be a little easier. But mobile units, they can move on you. So that's the only downside with range units is they can move. If they move and they're out of your range, you now have to move. I'm going to now attack him. I'm going to hit him here. So now he's. I basically knocked him out. I've basically damn near killed him. I've given him nine damage. He has like one life left. He can attack me if he wants to. I'm not too worried about it because he's not going to cause much damage. And remember, you take damage even if you're the one attacking sometimes. So if he attacks me, he's going to die. He's not surviving this. I promise you. You got to think about all these things when you're doing it. You can't just go in uh, willy-nilly and think he's just going to knock out everything ASAP quick. It doesn't work that way. And now I'm going to go ahead and end him here. And he's now dead. That is how important range units are to me. I, I can I just sustained no damage. I was able to hit him before he could hit me, cause enough damage where it made him have to think, do I really want to go ahead and attack this guy right now? Is there anything gonna come out of it? If he had backup, full send, attack him. He had no backup. And not only that, is I've cut him off. His base is here. His base is here. And because I've arranged it, I will be able to see him, them coming before, well before they see me. They can be up to here, and I'm going to see them. They won't see me because my view, my range is longer than theirs. So, now I'm going after the second encampment, and then I'm going to go after the barbarian base and knock those out. I'm probably going to build a naval facility up at the top there. Actually, I might... So my city is growing like hell right now, which is good. I'm going to show you how I use range to attack a barbarian thing. We're going to adopt another policy. One plus gold, minus one, attack for every two cities in the city. So uh, I'll do this now, a monarchy. Basically what the monarchy is going to do for me is it's going to give me one plus gold. And it's going to get rid of one unhappy person for every two citizens in the capital. So... My gold spiked up to 14, which is huge. I have four people in this, I have 4,000 people in the city. I'm now making 14 gold a turn. That's 
kind of insane. For now, I've gotten to the point where I'm making like five, six, seven, sometimes high as 900 gold a turn, which is insane because at that point, I you can buy units outright too. You can just flat buy units outright if you have the capital. Okay. Now I just what I build. I build a. What did I just build? Because I lost gold. Oh, so I built a granary. A granary is going to cost money to build. Um, it's just how it is. Who's texting me? Don't give a damn. Um, the granary it takes, man, this is one gold a turn. It, to maintain it is one gold a turn. To purchase it, the cost is six production points. Remember, you have to gain production. You have to, all this stuff you have to earn. You know, it's not given to you. You have to earn all this stuff. So, the more you're building, the more you're losing. So, you better only be building what you need. Gainery is important. I need the gainery for that, for the purpose of growth. But now, I need to build something else in the city. I want to go ahead and build another settler. Again, not too worried about the army aspect right now. Um, after the settlers built, I'm probably then going to build uh, some naval units and start stacking up. Each naval base right now, I only have one. I want three ships in it for now. Eventually, I'll be getting naval brigades, and then I'll be having things like typically a naval brigade for me. I'll end up having it can be depending on how much money I have. It can be six destroyers, probably more like three destroyers, and I typically do three destroyers. And a submarine is typically how I do it. Three destroyers in a submarine and two, one or two submarines. It get, allows me to bombard the city with the destroyers while also give me the back end watch the submarines watching my six. Again, strategies, all strategy. Um, so let's see. I should be moving. So I found some survivors lost in the ruins. In gratitude, they settled on one of your cities, increasing the population. So it looks like I found some people who wanted to join my civilization, uh, and they settled in Washington. I also have this barbarian unit here, which is what I want to knock out. So I'm using my rank. Well, I can't. Grayson, no. I want to use this range unit right here. All right, so Grayson, I said no. Oh, kids don't listen all the time. So this warrior sitting right here, we're gonna go ahead and attack this guy here. And he's dead. That is how much stronger my crossbowman is compared to the barbarians. And we're going to go ahead and move to the next turn because, again, once your turn is up, yeah. All right, Pearl Harbor has grown. I'm now at 2,000 people, which is good. It's going to take longer. I'm getting 15 gold a turn, 10 science points a turn, and I'm at 360 right now. Um, on my way to a golden age. Now I want to go and I want to start knocking out these units here. Because now I want to take out this barbarian unit right there. So I'm going to use my range skill. So actually I'm going to try and see if I can hit them from here. Which I doubt but we're going to try it. I like to try and stay out of their range. Where even if they try to attack me I have a couple days I can launch attacks, offensive attacks on them before I have to bail out. Range units getting hit. Range units have to go defensively. Don't do very well. They're not defensive units. They're offensive. So you need to take that into consideration. If you're not causing enough damage and they're getting closer and closer, time to bail because you are going to die. So I'm now sitting here. This unit is almost dead, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and end it for them. Get them off my goddamn country. Let's see if they're in range. So they're not in range yet for me. So I'm gonna move them a little closer here. When going over some rough terrain, the terrain is definitely slower. Okay. So we're gonna sit here. If he's smart, if that barbarian is smart, he's gonna sit to keep his ass right in that encampment and stay fortified. Him coming out to meet me, he's gonna die. The minute he walks out of this encampment and he sits in here, he's dead. 
Uh, you definitely get a defensive bonus if you're on terrain like this, but his health is so shit right now, it's not going to do much, and my archers are stronger. So he is well within range of me right now, so watch. I can hit him from a days out. This is typically a two-day trip. My artillery, my, uh, my, uh, uh, archers can hit that, so we're going to go in and knock it out from there. And he is dead. So now what I'm going to do is now that no one's in there, it's going to take me three days to get to it. I'm going to take over that encampment, and then it typically gives you some money for doing that. That is how the game works. Obviously, strategies are going to change with different military units that you have. We're in the process of building a trimene. Um, there's not much range in the trimene at all, so those aren't going to get much out of it. But I'm going to build one here. Washington, I want to utilize. I'm probably going to build an archer and a trimene and a fishing boat in my next turn from Washington because I want to make sure we stay up on those. So I get, we kind of just have to sit here and wait. And I, kinda, I do need a worker. So I've developed optics. And now, so I, also, I, forgot, so I forgot to tell you. As you progress in the game, you go through different areas in life. Um, the classical area, I'm actually the first country to now get into the classical area. Otherwise, it would tell me an unmet player, if I've not met him, has entered a classical era, the medieval era, the industrial era, the modern era, whatever era I'm going into, it'll tell you. So I'm the first one to get there. Different technologies are going to get you there faster. I went the ultra fast route to get there. I really don't care about the eras, to be honest with you. I'm more worried about, again, I'm a military person, so I want the military power aspect of it. So I'm going to close out that. I don't care. I'm automatically going to be in the classical era. I'm going to choose a new research. Choose a new research. <laughs> And now I want to look at a compass. Actually, let's switch it up. Let's do something a little go mining, because I want to be able to utilize that marble right there. So that's only gonna take me four days to do. See, here it goes. I took over that barbarian encampment, cleared. I got thirty gold from doing it. So now, not only did I get money from it, and not only did my guy get experience, because every time your your military units fight, you gain military experience. The more military experience you have, the better your unit will survive in battle. Um, it's just like training. Um, it's no different than uh, urban combat with the U.S. military. They've had two decades of fighting in urban combat, Afghanistan and Iraq. They're really well versed in urban combat. Some of the best urban combat fighters in the world now. Experience. That's all it is. So the more you do, the better it is. Again, you don't want to be stupid and do some stupid shit and get stuff killed. Um... Military units are expensive to build, they're expensive to maintain, and they're, you don't want to just lose them doing some dumb shit. I've done things where, like at the beginning when I first started playing, I did not realize Trimines can't just sail everywhere. I took it out, lost a couple ships doing it. It kind of sucked because you don't keep their ships back, you have to remake new ships. And now I was down a couple units in my Navy, and that was kind of shitty. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up pulling this guy back over to Washington. And we're going to keep him over here in this area. We're going to keep him fortified over here. So there's nothing else for me to really explore in this cunt, in this plot of land. This plot of land kind of sucks. Uh, I don't have a lot of space in that. So I'll probably eventually be pulling out and exploring more. Um, I'm probably eventually going to start moving up into this area up here. Because I want to take over this encampment there. Those ruins there. So that is my goal. And my plan. So that's Gray. Gray. No, dude. Come on, dude. No. He's like chewing on a dinosaur. I don't know why he's doing that. Kids. That's what it is. It's kids. So we're going to go ahead and skip over to the next turn here. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. Let's keep going. Where are we at? So, 
All right, so one thing you're going to notice right here is you see how Pearl Harbor has this target over it. It means there's a target within range. This is an enemy unit. So I'm going to click this here because I want this gone. Didn't do much. This is my new navy. Did not do much at all. So we're going to go ahead and do dick. The more, I, the more you guys follow along with this, the more y'all understand it. I'm going to stop explaining things as much. I'm just doing this so y'all are aware of what's actually going on and happening in this situation. So, again, we need to hit this unit again. We have a settler going. I'm going to put the settler right there. Choose production. Now, I want to build a trimene, a naval unit. Actually, let's build an archer first. So it'll take me four days to build an archer and to train one. My son's feeding the dog Pringles. <laughs> he loves that damn dog so much. I'll skip that turn there. Grayson, stop, please. So I'm going to attack it again. So now we're at the point now, as the city's attacking more and more, we're able to cause a little more damage, which is why this unit took a lot a bigger hit this time, which is good. It's on its way out, um, which is our goal, because I don't want that unit sitting there. We're going to find a new research because I just researched mining, which I can't really do much now because I don't have a, I don't have a worker. So we're going to go to animal husbandry. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't freaking know. Um. there and a lot of times depending on where you're at you can actually gain money at building cities if you don't have enough cities a lot of times sometimes you will lose money so gain, making cities a lot of times can actually help improve you bring in more money to your country now it doesn't always happen like that um, there are cases where you have too many and you build more and you lose money you just you are yeah, it's costing you more to have a city than it's worth and what you're bringing in in that case that's never a good sign i have something in my eye so let's take a look now we have so people i like to smile the most apparently i'm an asshole because my people are not that happy they'll get over it <laughs> they'll be fine um, so this trimene has now moved out of my range. It does not want me to attack it anymore. Um, it's moved out. So I Washington can't hit it. It's well out the range of Pearl. So as of right now, we're just watching movements of my troops as they're, they're repositioning for wherever it is they're trying to go. Replace them. How is it 920 in the morning? Everyone the grandmother's hitting me up right now. So there's another encampment. So I got to be very careful with this um, because I'm built on a naval base right here. And there's a, not, I mean, an army base here. And there is a barbarian encampment there. So I am going to build it here. I'm going to rename New York to Fort Bliss. So all my military bases start with Fort. All my, uh, uh, obviously, Air Force bases. It's going to have Air Force names to it. Naval is going to be a naval name to it. Um, and so much and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and attack that encampment there. And I'm actually going to now divert my crossbowmen out to Fort Bliss. It's going to take three days to get there, which kind of sucks because that season going to get hit. Um, but what you have to understand, we're going to go an archer first. But what you kind of learn is you just have to, this is why it's so important to have the military units there. Um, 
it's really important because if you don't, you're going to get screwed. And the good thing about it is if you can build it, you can, you can actually attack from a city, which is going to improve the defensive component of you. So if they do attack you, whether I'm going to uh, infect you a range, it's not going to affect me as much. So we have another archer that's set up. So now I have three archers. Um, do I need three archers? Ideally, no. But we're going to keep three because once they upgrade, I can change them and form other battalions like that. So I'm going to bring this guy down. I'm deploying him south. I want to build a trimene in Washington because I need to support the naval facility there. I still am watching my goal because now I'm starting to pump out military units. This is my second ship I'm building, and I have one, two, three military units coming out. So I really need to pay attention to this right here. I want to make sure I'm not losing myself or screwing myself or fucking myself over money-wise for the military component. Shit. I love you. So... I'm expecting them to actually try and attack uh, for Bliss, but they haven't. Someone's built the Great Library. We're going to attack with Cameron again. So basically, I'm just doing ranged attacks from a city right now until I can get my military units down there. I don't care if it take if, if it's only one unit that's attacking me. I'm sending an entire military unit uh, military division down. I call them divisions for the army stuff, for the uh, ground units, and I call them brigades for naval. So I will always send a full um, division down because I want to make sure I don't. I have the support needed. I'm gonna fire again. Uh, but now I have this guy sitting there, so I'm gonna use this and I'm going to hit. the encampment there and they're wiped out. That was pretty easy to do. I'm now going to use this guy here. I am still out of range. I want this guy to now he's going to be targeting that ship. Uh, so we'll do that on the next turn. I'm probably going to have I think I have a third. I don't. I just have those two. I'm probably going to have uh, the archer attack the ship. Crossbowman attack the ship and then come down to here. It's not worth me taking out that encampment before that's gone because he can attack on me and I don't want to lose him. Uh, we're going to build a calendar. I really want compass, but it's going to take 44 days to get that. And I'm, that doesn't make sense. So build a calendar there. Next turn. Like that. That's what I'm talking about. So the Trimene can attack me. I'm also going to promote a unit. So once you just start getting experience, I can start promoting them. So the two I can use, Barrage 1 or Accuracy 1. Barrage 1 is going to give me a plus 25% combat range unit against units in rough terrain. Forests, mountains, hills, things like that. Areas where it's already harder. Grayson, please don't. Areas where it's already harder to kill a unit because their defense is higher, that would be good for that. So if you're in an area where there's a lot of rough terrain, or your enemy's in a lot of rough terrain, you always want to promote based on what you're trying to do at that time. You can't take it back. Um, just be smart about it. Um, accuracy is better for open range. Um, I'm going to go with rough terrain. I'd rather have that. Um, before Bliss, we're going to go ahead and attack... Unit there. We're going to use the archer here to attack this guy here. Again, all range. And there he is. The archer's now, the archer's killed him, which means I now have my crossbowman. I can take him straight down and knock out that encampment. I got 30 more gold for the encampment. So it's that simple. You just have to play it smart. That's not like using range. Um, I don't have to directly engage face to face. I can engage him from a farther distance, which also helps keep people alive <laughs> obviously so we have three cities so far down here going um after this again i said we're going to build a fishing boat and then we're going to build something else a city improvement we're probably going to start moving them up here um 
I do will I would like one city improvement at least to get built. Pro is grown there. I'm probably gonna build a city around up here and then probably another naval station up here. I don't need to build another army base because I'm gonna push out divisions and divi army divisions can be relocated anywhere. So I'm not gonna build a whole bunch of them. I'm gonna save some money doing that. But now I'm gonna redeploy these guys back into a We'll keep him around for Bliss there. And so he got injured, so I'm just going to do a... I'm going to hit this button here. It's going to fortify him until he's healed. Um, and we'll move on to the next turn. So... We're going to continue following this game as we go. I'm only going to play with you guys. At least this one. So, oh, we don't want to do that. I'm going to press F. For, why is it not fortifying anything? F. So F is your fortification. I also now have my first naval unit. So I'm going to place in there. Fortify the naval unit there. She's from production at a, for, at a Pearl Harbor. As you can see, the more we do this, it becomes a lot more comfortable. I'm... And we can, and uh, it wow. just moves faster. Pearl, I want to build a lighthouse. The cost to build a lighthouse is about 75. Maintenance is one a turn, and I get plus one food from the ocean, which is going to help. Um, no, is going to help with the growth of that city. So we're going to go ahead and do that right there. Uh, it's going to allow me to adopt a new policy. So now we're still in the tradition aspect of it, and now we're starting to grow a little bit. So what we're going to do is. I'm going to get a garrison unit. I'm going I'm to do the uh, oligarchy, whatever you pronounce it. I don't know. But we're going to do that. It's going to help with the garrison units. Um, there's going to be no maintenance. And since the garrison units gain 100% accuracy for range. So we're going to do that, which means my money should go up. It didn't go up, which is kind of bullshit. But that's the game right there. Um, let's go ahead and save this, actually. We'll just save it as Chris. That's the one I have going. So we'll save that. Right there. Come on. So that's the game right there. We're going to stop right there for now because I know it's a lot right now. So we're going to stop right there. And then uh, we're going to keep going with it You know, as we go. We've already been playing the game for about an hour and 15 minutes, so that should tell you right there kind of what we're looking at. Um, it is a long game. An hour and 14 minutes just to get to the point we're at right now. We haven't really even gained much of anything. No, like, get out of there. <sighs> um, so, uh, um, there'll be another video popping up a little later. This is a game. Probably going to be a lot of reactions for it because I love this game. I'm addicted to it. So, we're definitely going to be looking at this game again uh, probably today. I'll probably drop another reaction today. And then we will go from there, man. I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, keep following along for the next one. And um, you're going to follow me on my journey with it. I love you all. Drop your comments down below. Any questions, go ahead and do it. I hope I can get some more Civilization fans going on here. I love because I love this game. I love gaming. And I will catch you again later. Yeah. Love.